Good afternoon, everybody. I know it's the end of the day, and we're the last panel keeping you from drinks and dinner. So we're going to hope to keep it a little engaging, and hopefully you have some questions and um, get really excited and inspired by our panelists that we have coming up. So this morning and uh, prior to this session, a lot of the conversations have been around um, some of the technical uh, solutions and innovations in the crisis mapping field. And before we get into this next conversation, I'd like to just give a little background on the Rockefeller Foundation and our interest and our experience really uh, focusing on building resilience uh, globally. So the Rockefeller Foundation, for those of you who aren't familiar, is a US-based private foundation. Um, we're over 100 years old. Uh, we have, uh, we have an op uh, presence in Africa, Asia, Latin America, and we also um, do work um, domestically in the United States. And the foundation itself uh, has two uh, overarching goals that guide our work um, and our, our programmatic work. The first is around um, creating more inclusive economies. And and equitable development. The second is around building resilience. And what do we mean by building resilience? Because that's a term that's been thrown around a lot today. And I think a lot of people think about it exclusively in the disaster planning and preparedness context. But when we think about resilience at the Rockefeller Foundation, we really think about it holistically. And our definition of resilience is the capacity of individuals, communities, organizations, and systems to survive, adapt, and grow in the face of shocks and stresses, and even transform when conditions require it. Simply put, resilience is what pe enables people to survive, adapt, and thrive. And many of the projects today uh, inherently are doing that through, um, through, through what they um, were discussing with you and sharing today. But I think what is important uh, just to, to stress and to reiterate again is uh, we, when, we, when we think about resilience projects, we really think about that holistic aspect of them. And we really think about both the social cohesion as well as the risk mitigation um, aspect of a project. And so I'm going to keep my remarks really brief here at the beginning because I really want um, to give these panelists um, and our partners the opportunity to speak to some of the details of the exciting work that they're doing. Um, but just wanted to put that framing out at the beginning. And um, just another reflection and uh, actually a reaction to something uh, that Nama had said uh, during his talk, um, or I think it was actually a question that was asked from the audience, um, is there's a concept that we at the foundation think about um, when we're assessing projects and when we're working with different partners. And that's the concept of a resilience dividend. Um, and really that's thinking about resilience investments that they generate a return that it could be potentially financial, but it could also be more qualitative. So um, something that's reducing inequality or increasing social cohesion. And then what the foundation is really focused on at the moment is actually measuring that impact. And how are we assessing um, how uh, an investment, whether it be from us or from the broader uh, development community, is uh, increasing a community's adaptive capacity, enabling it to thrive and actually bounce back quicker um, when conditions require it. So just wanted to put that framing into, into um, your minds as we're kicking off this next session. We're going to hear from four really exciting organizations and the work that they're doing um, across Asia, not just here in the Philippines. And then uh, I'm excited to have a conversation with them afterwards. So thank you. Thanks. <laughs> 